It's been 12 years since I last took the MCAT. Just thinking of that reminds me of how old I am. In this video today, I'm going to be taking the MCAT for the first time in 12 years. And don't beat me up, guys. Just don't be hard on me. It's been 12 years. I haven't seen this information. Physics equations, chemistry, biology, verbal reasonings, psychology, all this stuff. We just don't use it as surgeons. But in this video today, I'm going to be taking the MCAT. What's up, everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. For those that are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Antonio Webb, an orthopedic spine surgery fellow. So, 2008, that's the last time I took the MCAT. And I know a lot has changed since 2008 in terms of the test structure, the way the test is administered, how many times per year, how many times that you can maximally take the test. And for those that don't know, the MCAT or Medical College Admission Test is a standardized test that we take before we can apply to medical school. And the medical schools use this test as a way to differentiate one applicant from another. It's an eight hour exam that covers physical sciences, chemistry, biology, reasoning, critical thinking skills, psychology, sociology, anything that you can think of is on this freaking test. It's actually one of the most challenging tests that I can remember taking kind of along my path to become a surgeon. And I've taken maybe 14 or 15 eight hour exams. So we're going to take a look at a practice MCAT test and see how well I can do on it. I probably will do pretty poorly just because it's been so long since I have seen this information. And this is the type of information if you don't constantly review it or refresh, you'll forget it. And as a surgeon, I don't need to know the chemical equation for some type of molecule. Just don't need that. So we're gonna head right over and uh, take this test. It should be really interesting. Here we go. So question number one, which is not a characteristic of proteins? Okay, this is uh, not too bad. Number one, I don't think that they can self-replicate so that's probably the answer, but I'm gonna go through the rest. Proteins just don't self-replicate. Uh, they can act as a hormone. They can act in cell membrane trafficking because I remember that they can be on the cell membrane. There can be a protein there that allows for a cascade of events and can bind form materials such as aminoglobulins or IgG, IgA. Those are proteins, right? So I think self replicate we're gonna go with that one a drug is used that prevents the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 so I remember from med school that this is a conversion that can affect your blood pressure orthopedic surgeons and blood pressure we don't know anything about it but angiotensin I know there's something to do with aldosterone I'm gonna eliminate blood pH. I don't think this allows you to uh, X out the wrong answer. Increase blood pressure. I think if you can prevent the conversion of one to two, I think this is gonna lower your blood pressure. Increase sodium re reabsorption. I do remember that it increases sodium reabsorption, or does it not? Uh, but I think um, increased potassium reabsorption. We're going to go with that. Amides. Wow, this is a structure I haven't seen in a while. Common in nature and industry. Linkage amino acids and polypeptides. Which of the following is an amide? Okay. Or a meat. Is it amide or a meat? So I, I know that the NH2 group is uh, one. CH3, is that methane, NO2? So I'm gonna go with uh, this first one here. I think that's an amide, just because it has that NH2. I, I don't remember anything about, what is this, chemistry? Which of the following is true regards to neurulation? Oh, this is something in spine, interesting. 
the neural tube differentiates from endoderm. I think it actually, I actually remember this from my orthopedic surgery boards. It comes from ectoderm. The neural tube becomes the peripheral nervous system. Uh, no, it's the, so there's a central nervous system and then there's a peripheral nervous system. This peripheral nervous system is like the nerves and that control your hand, fingers, legs, toes. Central nervous system is the brain and spinal cord. So I think the neural tube actually forms a portion of the spinal cord. So that's not true. And neural crest cells migrate from their original site. Maybe. So we're going to go with three. All right. This process is completed. Wow, this is, uh, what is it? CH12O6 plus O2 equals CO2 plus H2O. Interesting. I don't know. In the cytoplasm, in the area of the cell membrane, probably not. Area around the ribosomes. It's either cytoplasm or mitochondria. We're gonna go, I know mitochondria is something with ATP production, where a lot of chemical reactions occur. I have no idea. We're gonna go with mitochondria. All right, so biochemical pathways often involve multiple successive chemical reactions. Given the series of reactions below, what is the rate limiting step? So rate limiting step is always something that, if I remember correctly, is the um, something that slows down a process. Um, the MCAT is a rate limiting step for getting into medical school, if you had to think of it that way. So the slowest one is probably A to B. So we're going to go with, uh, we're going to eliminate the other ones. Two, it's not C to B, C, and three, it's not B, C, it's not fast. So we're going to go with one. What is the response of the immune system to the down regulation of MHC molecules on somatic cells? So the MHC molecules, this is kind of the immune system. It presents antigens or foreign things in the environment to cells that kill them. So B cells are activated, antibodies are released. That sounds about true. T cells are activated, resulting in cytotoxic response. Natural killer cells induce apoptosis of affected cells. Um... What, what is the response of the immune system to down regulation? So if you have a down re regulation of your MHC, you're gonna have less of a re immune response. So antibodies are not gonna be released. There's not gonna be an excited toxic response. I think there's gonna be apoptosis. Huh? Just because there's two pathways that I remember that I, I actually won't go there, but uh, I don't remember. So um, we're gonna go with natural killer cells. Person suffers from food poisoning after a spoiled lemon, later finds the smell of limes and other fruits that make her nauseous. What is, this is an example of, so I think if you generalize, hey, this is uh, something that I remember from the past, it's not acquisition, discrimination, or negative reinforcement. We're going to go with B. The different types of gametes would be produced by an organism of the genotype. Huh. I have no idea what they're talking about. Jesus Christ. So, if, if, if I ever get to a question on test and I have no idea, some absurd question that they're asking, I'm just going to guess. Uh, a, B, C, D, 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 B. We're going to go with B. A woman comes to the doctor with two-week history of complete paralysis. Oh, that's a little uh, spine question. She had no injury to her extremity. Full neurologic workup fails to demonstrate any underlying cause. She's unconcerned about her paralysis, seeing more worried about an argument. So this is something that you see typically in the hospital. Patients come in and they can't move their legs, but there's some type of underlying psychological issue. It's, there's nothing wrong with the spine itself. It's all supertentorial. So, it's not histor hysteronic. It's not illness, anxiety disorder. It's probably a conversion disorder. That's the word. I remember that from psychiatry. Structural isomers. Wow. 
have drastically different roles in the body. How many structural isomers of C3H6Br2 are capable of, of exhibiting optical activity? I have no idea. We're gonna go with three. That sounds like a really lucky number. A six foot man lifts a hundred pound weight from the floor to a height one feet above his head. How much work is being done in lifting the weight? That's a lot of work. I think it's heavy. <laughs> um, then again, I have no idea. I remember there is a uh, formula for work. I think it's force times distance, if I remember, remember correctly. But so usually when I see questions like this, uh, uh, there's a six there, there's a hundred there, and there's a one there. So if we, we're going to go with a uh, hundred pound weight, one foot above his head. So I would imagine you have to add these heights together. So six foot plus one foot to seven foot, we're going to go with 700 pounds. What is the statement about cyclic A and P, or which statement is not true? It is formed from ATP, maybe. An enzyme that catalyzes the formation of cyclic A and P is adenylate cyclase. I think that is definitely true. I remember that from my orthopedic surgery boards. Enzyme that catalyzes CAMP is located in the cytoplasm, maybe. And I know it can, be regarded as regarded as a second messenger so um, we're gonna go with C it's either C or A we're gonna go with C a patient who resides in the United States and say I love you and hugs this doctor after every routine visit this behavior violates we can't do that that happens to me all the time no, I'm just joking uh, that is uh, not very normal. It's not social values or personal beliefs. Social norms. Oh man, another uh, molecule, or whatever this is. The potential danger involved with ingesting certain compounds associated with their solubility in the body's aqueous environment, which will the following is most soluble in water. So I do know that, you know, the more OH groups, it's gonna be more soluble. So we're gonna eliminate C, we're gonna eliminate D, it's either A or B. So we're gonna go with uh, B. Which of the following describes the populations targeted by Medicare and Medicaid respectively? So I know, Medicaid patients are mostly low income. Medicare, mostly the older patients over 65, 60 or something like that. So we're just gonna jump to the answer for time's sake and go with um, C. Wow, 81%, that's crazy. So I did better than I expected, but some of those questions were a lot of Guess I just guessed them. Um, I do remember some of these questions and some of the concepts just because I just took my orthopedic surgery boards and we had some questions on second messenger, cyclic A and P, some medications. How does Coumadin work? What is the mechanism of action behind that? So we had to know the basic science for a lot of these medications and a lot of enzymes reaction. So that's just from my orthopedic surgery board. So, but wow, I, I actually did uh, better than I expected. Spine surgeon takes the MCAT. This is how it went. And just remember the MCAT is one aspect of your application. GPA, personal experiences in life, non-traditional student, letters recommendation, volunteer, shadowing experience, all these things can be taken into account. If you score low on the MCAT, figure out your weak areas, target those weak areas, concentrate on those weak areas and retake it. That's what I did. I took the MCAT three times. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.